Hi everybody, welcome to Tarot Puotis YouTube channel and today we are doing this interview in English because we have a special guest even though she lives in Finland actually in Porvo, isn't it true Justin? Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> but she's an English speaker and Justin Sederberry is actually, you might know at least her husband Aki Sederberry who wrote this amazing book that was actually really inspirational to me. I made a little pilgrimage uh, in the Finnish sacred nature sites after reading this book. But today we are not focusing on Justine's husband Aki or his book. Today we are talking about Ayurveda and mostly the products, the Ayurvedic products that Justine has created that we have you know, in our shops, all of the Tarot Poti shops and also in our web shops. So, so Justin, tell me a little bit about who you are, where you come from, why are you in Porvo? Yeah, good question. I get that a lot. And like a, a lot of Canadians who live in Finland, we usually come here for love. So obviously I came here because of Aki, um, but I did study Ayurveda in Portland, Oregon. So I did have to immigrate to the United States to study because that uh, back in those days, there was nowhere in Canada to study Ayurveda. Um, but I'm here in Finland and my company is Prasad Nordic Ayurveda. So I intertwine how to use some of the tools from India here in the colder climate, which there are many that we can look at, especially if you're looking at Nepal, where it's a colder climate, like what we experience here. Yeah. So how did you get interested about Ayurveda in the beginning? Well, I started out as a yoga teacher like many con Ayurveda consultants do. Um, and then I had my own personal health issues that I couldn't get answers from um, uh, allopathic medicine. So I, I really looked further into Chinese medicine and Ayurveda as well. And Ayurveda really struck me more personally than the Chinese medicine. Um, I really liked the sort of warm touch of the oils that we use. We use a lot of oil in Ayurveda, which is really excellent for our cold and dry climate in Finland. Yeah. And uh, so you are not just creating these products that we are selling. You also do like consultations. So tell me a little about what happens in a Ayurvedic session or consultation. Yeah, sure. Um, Ayurveda consultation includes a pulse diagnosis. So I'm going to check the pulse and through the pulse, I can see how the organs are functioning. And also by looking at your tongue, the tongue is like a map of everything that's happening inside. So we can get really good diagnostics through the pulse and the tongue. And then I can help advise which herbs and which sort of lifestyle and seasonal rhythm would be suitable for each individual person as everyone is unique. So I'm definitely not giving the same herb for the same symptoms. Everybody is going to get something different because herbalism is my strength. It's something I've been working with from a very young age in uh, Vancouver Island, Canada, which is um, part of the culture there growing up with the plants, just the way the Finns did also not too many generations ago. Yeah, and I'm so happy because I just graduated also on my herbalist course that people are really starting to to increase the use of herbs again and the plants and and the Finnish nature is so rich we have so many plant teachers and 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 you know a medicine in the forest also exactly so my company Prasad Nordic Ayurveda I really try to use the local plants as much as possible Um, and they're very good for prevention. So if people can come to see me for a consultation before they get really sick, then we can really work on prevention with local herbs. Once people have something that's a little more chronic, maybe it's been in the body for 10 years or more, then we need to look often more to the south for some of the herbs that have more potency and power. I'm not to say that like the Finnish herbs are weak, it's just that they tend to be um, more building, you know, because we have a very harsh environment. But um, in the southern climates, we have things that um, special resins from trees, um, certain kinds of roots that are really going to work on some of those really chronic illnesses. So I might do a mix of Ayurvedic herbs and local herbs for something that's really chronic. Yeah, that's amazing. So uh, what about these products now that we have on the shelf? We have, at least in Tampere, we have the perfumes. Then we have, uh, can you show, do you have some of those there? We have the perfumes here. Let's hold them up. 
there. Yeah, and they are, as you can see, there's the Vata, Pita and the Kappa. And if you are ever heard anything about Ayurveda, you've probably heard those words. But now when people come to the shop and they haven't, you know, seen you or don't know anything about Ayurveda, how would they be able to use these perfume products and how would they be able to choose the correct one for them? Yeah, so they can be used seasonally, also time of day or for personal balance. So I've designed them in a way that they would be safe to use for anybody. So there's not going to be any harm if you're not sure what your balance is between the doshas of Ayurveda. Doshas are these elements. Everybody has a balance of these elements. Um, so there's no harm if you're going to use the wrong one. Usually the one that the the scent is the most resonating, the one that you like the smell of the most, is going to be the one that's going to help you balance. The only case I would say is the kapha one, which is quite spicy. If you know you have a lot of heat, you know, you feel frustrated and angry and this heated emotions, you get really overheated in the summer, then that spicy one probably is not going to resonate with you and might make you feel a little more heated. So that would be the only precaution there. And and I yeah. can test I can test to that because we were testing these products a lot on the Pakanalis at Suus Messut. We were there, our group there was Ville and and then Thea and we were testing all these products and I I do have a sometimes kind of a temperamenty kind of side to me and and there is that fire there and I was really like, mm, that is not for me. And the other ones were drawn to it and they were like, Ch -ch -ch -ch. oh, I'm feeling this. But I needed the cooling one that smelled like nice to me. And when I put that on, I was like, yes, this one is for me. So it's kind of really intuitive, actually. Yeah, exactly. And I'll just show the kapha one is the spicy one that we talked about, which is really warming. It has a very similar uh, formula to thieves oil, which was used during the plague time. So it's also really naturally antibacterial. It's like a shield. It helps protect from other people's viruses and energies. So I always wear that before I go out in uh, big public areas, like at the Seuss Mesut, for example, yeah. and people like that warm. But the one I think that you like, the cooling, uh, I believe, was the Pitta, the floral one. Yep. This one has lavender and vetiver, oolang lang, bergamo, and rosewood. So I've designed them in a way where first you can smell the top notes. So those would be the more floral ones that I mentioned. And then the rosewood, for example, is the base note that will come in near the end. So um, you're going to, you know, first moments smell more floral. And then as you wear it for a few moments, you'll get into that more heavier notes. And the the Pitta one, for example, I don't necessarily personally get frustrated or overheated too much, but for example, I was doing like a pop-up Ayurvedic restaurant and it was super hot out and I was in the kitchen and I was like sweating. I had it in my pocket and I just kept spraying it on and it was the only thing that really <laughs> made me through that pop-up restaurant. So it can it can really help with that that heat kind of feeling or um, also, for ladies who are going through menopause with those hot flashes, of course, that's going to cool it down. Often they come at nighttime. I suggest leave the bottle by the bed so you have it there as your tool to put on and help you get back to sleep, cool down those uh, hot flashes. Can you show again the bottle, the, the cooling one? Yeah. Yeah, that one. I really like that one. And it's interesting because it said about the other one, the, the heating one uh, that Villa liked. He also really likes the thieves the cleaning products and and the oils and whatnot with that one so so it's interesting what draws people in and so the third one can you tell more about that one the more grounding one yeah. that's the vata perfume and it's a very grounding and fresh herbal scent so if you like a sort of fresh herby um, I've combined fennel and basil together and when you put those together it kind of has a licorice this lakritsi kind of smell to it which is very grounding and it has that sweetness and then I do have some sweet orange in there because um, for grounding elements sweet can be grounding like natural sweet and then there's salvia which is everyone's favorite as a grounding scent in there and sandalwood which is also really popular. So if those sandalwood salvia kind of scents are something that you really like, you're going to love this scent, as long as you like the smell of this kind of licorice fennel kind of scent there. 
And I think these products for us Finns is a perfect uh, example of the seasonality. So can you explain a little about why it would be a perfect product for like this season when there's snow outside and... Uh, exactly. So we have a really long vodka season in Finland. It's almost half of the year. This year um, it started already in October and it will go until spring decides to come. And sometimes it can start as early as September. So vata season, that's the air and wind element. And it's very cold, it's very dry, it's very erratic and changeable. So we have a harder time being grounded and being still, even though we're supposed to be like the bear in the winter, right? But you see, we're kind of like fighting against it. We have all these lights on all the time and we're supposed to work 24 seven. And, you know, so it's really hard for us to get through that, that elemental time. So the Vata perfume really helps me get through that. So yeah. I'm wearing that a lot, about six months of the year in Finland. <laughs> Yeah. Then what about uh, seasonality? How would you use the two other ones, the heat one and the cooling one? How would you use those with the Finnish season, seasons? Yeah, so the spicy kapha one is really good for spring. So that's going to be after that vata winter season. When spring comes, it can be really short here in Finland, but it has often a wet and heavy quality. So kapha is water and earth. So it's kind of like when you put those together, you get mud. You get that heaviness so the spiciness motivates that heaviness so especially for those who feel heavy in the spring it's not everyone's favorite season you know some people are like yes i love it and others are like oh i'm so tired i feel like like a wet soggy you know blanket you know then you're gonna spray it on in the morning because that's kapha time of day and it's gonna get your day boosted and energized so I keep that one by the bed in the spring and I just spray it on, you know, when I wake up and it's still kind of dark in the morning, it's like a morning coffee. I, I don't take caffeine. I just use the kapha in the morning on those days that I feel tired. Yeah. And then what about the last one then? The, my favorite one. Uh, yeah. So that would be more classically like a summer scent, but of course you can use it all year long if you are having those heated and frustrated kind of emotions or those hot flashes, like we said, but during summer, everyone's favorite. They love that really beautiful lavender, bergamot, and ulang ulang kind of scent in there with those flowers. It feels a little more sexy maybe than the other two scents, a little more sensual. And um, it really does cool, like we both have experienced. It can really cool down those flames. And summer is my favorite season, even though I'm a child born in in fall so but fall isn't my favorite so maybe it's that it's always trying to keep me in that summer moments just trying to grasp <laughs> that little short summer of finland but then you said we have now the seasons figured out but what about the day so you start your day with the spring one yeah kapha so that uh red one that's spicy with the cinnamon clove it's got uh, lemon and eucalyptus in there as well. And the rosemary. I love the rosemary for the brain function. Yeah. So that's also like if you're feeling foggy headed, the kapha one's going to help with uh, the, boon, the brain boost there. And um, yeah, so kapha one would be good, good for morning because kapha time is six to 10 in the morning. Yep. That's the time we want to have movement. Also, if you wake up not feeling refreshed, you have to think, are you going to bed early enough? That would be the first thing. If you're not going to bed early enough, then you're probably not feeling refreshed in the morning. But if you are going to bed early, you know, 10 o'clock is a good time at night. If you are going to bed early and you still feel groggy in the morning, then maybe you need this uh, kapha spray to help you get boosted in the morning, especially if you're taking coffee and nothing's happening. You know, those people who take coffee and then they don't, nothing really happens. Yeah. So yeah, I have kapha spray to get you motivated then from 10 till 2 in the afternoon so 10 in the morning till 2 in the afternoon would be pit the time that's the fire element is the strongest and you show it again the yeah so yeah so during yeah. that time our digestion is strong that's when we want to have the biggest meal of the day because we're going to be able to melt and digest the food easiest and also that's when people get that kind of hangry right hungry angry Yes. If you people who get that, if you can't get wait till the food, spray that on, it will help you get to the lunch time. So, you know, if you're at work and your lunch break isn't for another hour, you can try putting that on and it will help, you know, subside the, the hunger until that time. 
Um, also from two till six would be in the afternoon would be vata time. And that's often when people start to not focus anymore. They've been at the computer all day. They start grabbing for sugar or coffee because they think that's going to center them again. But the vata spray would be much better for centering than taking sugar or caffeine. Yeah, also if you're trying to meditate, that can help as well. I'm gonna try and, to uh, I'm gonna to try to do that because I get that like sugary craving at that time. So today, I'm gonna to try that one. Yeah. Yeah. So I really suggest experimenting through those times of day and those doshas. They cycle again after six. We have kapha comes again around dinner time. Pitta is before bedtime, and vata is the early morning hour. So it does cycle again, and that's why you can use pitta spray also to help fall asleep because that. 10 to 11 time is the height of pitta and then if you're waking up several times in the night and can't get back to sleep that's the vata hours and you could use the vata spray again to help fall back to sleep so we can see how we can use all three throughout several times of the day and with the season so i've designed them in that way so you don't really have to have a consultation and know the balance of the doshas that's why people it would be great if they could learn these doshas with seasons and times and not just through their own personal yeah. balance yeah but that's a way to get started and get you know excited about ayurveda so that's and um, because you're coming to at least to tampere shop at some point to do consultations and people can already come to you for your consultations back there but we'll talk about that a little later but they could you know start even without consultation that's lovely i think but then you have one interesting product at our shop i don't know if you have it there the the love potion one you so this is the first product that i made when i moved to finland i moved here in december so i knew that it was going to be long and dark winter and so i had been making this for myself already uh, when i was living in portland and when i moved here experienced the first winter i thought all fins <laughs> need the love elixir so it's you know it's called lemon roto in finnish you know it's a it's like a love potion but yeah. it's also for love too so it does attract others i have noticed when people take it or when i take it you definitely attract some attention um but also like for feeling self-love because in the winter time and the winter is long and hard you know when the skin kind of starts getting kind of gray there's no color yeah and then you know, we're feeling like <laughs> dragging ourselves to the winter and when you have those moments where you feel like you can't take it anymore the love elixir is a very good quick fix so if the the anxiety or the depression is um something that just happens sometimes it's a very good quick fix there are herbs that would be better for like deep depression but this love elixir like i said I feel bad now and I want to feel better immediately because the tinctures because it's an alcohol tincture it goes directly to the bloodstream so it doesn't need to go through the digestion therefore it works very effectively and very quickly so I take it in those moments of you know the hard darkness also um, there is a damiana flower in there and that I get organic from Mexico that one unfortunately I haven't been able to get to grow here yeah. but all the other are as are local um, or within uh, Europe and um, but yeah the Damiana flower it creates uh, blood flow to the pelvic region so if you have menstrual cramps it helps get energy moving through there because often when we have menstrual cramps it's because things are stuck so we want to get things moving but that also does create a sexual desire if you take it during non-menstruation so that's where the the aphrodisiac part is actually true to the product especially if you take a little higher dose you are going to feel that physical sensuality as well so you can decide how you want to take it you can take a little bit and that would like lift the mood it would help get out of sort of a funk like a bad feeling or you can take like a double dose to really feel that aphrodisiac quality so you can decide you know if you're if you're not really into the whole sensual part just take a small part but if you really are want to experience with that sensual side then then try experience taking some more and it's not only for women isn't it because you're talking a oh. lot about female stuff but it's also for men exactly um it, it is my husband Aki's favorite product that I make so 
he can attest to that, that uh, he thinks it's really wonderful. It works when we take it. It's even not just physical. We notice that we're more interested in each other's conversation. We're kind of like, oh yeah, like what you're talking about is very interesting. Tell me more, you know, especially when you see the same person every day, you know, lives are busy with schedule, you know, and if you want to take something together to sort of have a moment together, even just to talk, I notice it, it really helps with connection with a partner. And then of course, if you take a larger amount, you're really going to feel that more sexual connection as well. So for men, it's not like Viagra. It doesn't give like an immediate kind of yeah. feeling, but it will help you get more into the mood, appreciate your partner more. And some people say it does, it can help with the stamina in the bed, but it's not like a Viagra. Yeah. yeah. And the way I've, you know, fallen in love with this product is through the ceremonial cacao, because it's a favorite product of mine nowadays. And I've really worked with that. But then I spiced my ceremonial cacao with the love elixir and we have different brands also with the cacao and we have this one called um passion where there's roses and mucuna prunes and whatnot and then when you put it there you can make a beautiful you know couple ceremony with the cacao and and with the love elixir or just you know take it by yourself take a nice warm bath whatever is really beautiful and I'm glad that you mentioned the cacao with the rose because the finished wild roses is one of the main ingredients in the love elixir. We have a lot of these great roses and actually here in Porvo anyway, they're digging them all out, unfortunately. It's quite sad because they are very invasive, but they're so beautiful and they have so much medicine in them. I wish I could convince the city, like let's keep some of them, you know, for yeah. their beauty and properties. So there's no harm in over harvesting that one. You can take as much as you want. Um, so the finished wild rose, when I drip the alcohol through the rose petals, they become clear. They just give the medicine. They're just amazing. When I worked with roses in other parts of the world, they don't do that. They just, they don't become clear. They kind of just lose their shape to the petal. But these petals, they, they still stay intact, but they've just given all the medicine out. And they're super fragrant. You can really smell the rose in there. So. You can add the drops even to like a fancy drink if you want to go to like a party and you want to have some sparkling wine and kind of get everybody into a good mood you can put it in everybody's drink i do that if we have a party everyone's gonna have some love elixir together and um there's a really good taste to it you know because love elixir should taste good so it definitely has a sweetness to it there's honey local um porvo honey from where i live from a small producer i have raspberries in my garden that i've put in there and also lemon balm or citruna melissa which is from my garden as well and we're gonna put a little brandy in there to give it that nice flavor so it's not doesn't have too much of a vodka flavor it's more of a brandy honey raspberry with that rose scent to it yeah. and and i love that because this is how people get to know these products they look really like um not coming from your garden from Porvo so that's why I'm really grateful for this time and this interview so we really get to know where where the honey comes from and and whatnot so that's that's really beautiful but hey um what about how can people find you now if they want to come to a consultation to you before you can come to Tarot Puot? yeah so I have a, a room in Porvo where I live at Yoga Porvo and also in Helsinki in Hertaniemi. So you can book me in either places. I have um, a booking link from my website. My website is Prasad Bistafi, prasad.fi. And you can book there. There's also all the different kinds of treatments that you can book and consultations. So more than just the health consultations, I also do body work. So if you really want to have nice warm oil massage, I do marma points, which are like acupressure points. And I'm really intuitive with the body. I can read a lot from the body also and give you tips on how you can take care of yourself at home as well. Because I really want to empower my clients to be able to do self-care as well. Because I don't expect everybody's going to be able to come to me every week, of course. So you're going to be able to carry home a lot of uh, tips with you as well. Yeah, and I'm going to put all uh, Justin's links down in the comment box. And, and also your Instagram, which is all with the company name Prasad also. 
Lord of Ayurveda. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'll put all that there, and I'm definitely coming in for that oil treatment thingy thingy because I can't do that in the shop. But we will have days at the shop where you can get consultations, not the oil ones, <laughs> but you know, the basic Ayurvedic yeah. consultation. As far as I understand, we will have warm body oil treatments, but we won't have the Shirodara, which is where we're constantly pouring warm oil over the head and the forehead. It's a very mind calming treatment. Those I have currently only available in Helsinki because it requires a lot of equipment, um, but I can do whole body warm oil massage. That's yeah. amazing. And and also you do have other products uh, and we have like magnesium oil. Can you tell shortly about that too? Magnesium oil, it's a spray that you can uh, put directly onto the body. So it's going to be more absorbent and more effective than eating the magnesium pills, for example. And even some of the new studies are showing that when we eat the magnesium pills, the magnesium is not distributing evenly to the body. It's really going more to the arteries and possibly can cause some blockages towards the heart area. So I think we're going to start noticing um, at some point that they're not going to be recommending magnesium um, capsules and pills so much that it's going to be more transdermal, which means through the skin. And yeah. that's often how we naturally get our magnesium anyway, right? We would swim in the ocean, we would walk on sand, you know, depending on what parts of the world you live in, there's a lot of ways to get magnesium through the skin. Yeah. So I've, I've made this product so we can get it, you know, easily through the skin, especially for those who aren't making it into the water or it's hard to walk barefoot in Finland most of the year, especially sand, you know, so. And I at least, have, uh, and I at least get these, you know, the sword end of it though, in the bottom of my foot, it really aches and you know then that right on areas yeah any kind of cramping you can spray it you know or if the shoulders are tight up by the ears it's going to help release the shoulders down but specifically in finland we don't have very much magnesium in our soil compared to other parts of the world so here is especially important to supplement the magnesium especially if we're not eating a lot of wild plants because the wild plants contain quite a lot but like we've said the herbalism is is reviving in Finland, but there's still a lot of people that aren't incorporating those wild foods in there quite enough. Maybe they're getting some berries, you know, but the the plants, you know, we really need to put in there with to get that magnesium content. So that's why I made that when I moved here too, because I just see that there's a lot of magnesium deficiency in Finns and we have really low magnesium content in the dirt in the soil here. Um we will let you guys know when Justine is coming. And if you have questions about the products, uh, you can contact her. And of course, we will try to also answer <laughs> as best as we can at the shop. But uh, Justine is always there for you guys to reach and, and also to get the consultations. But I thank you, Justine, for your time. This was like super interesting. And I'm really eager to test the 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 perfume today in the afternoon instead of taking the chocolates that we have in the shop so <laughs> okay yeah. I, I would love with that and thank you for your time as well yeah and probably if it's needed we'll do another one if people get interested about talking deeper about Ayurveda so let's see we'll keep in touch yeah. and thank you for your time talking about Ayurveda let's do it thank yeah you. okay bye <laughs>